I run a small venture fund called Spring Ventures. We invest in, uh, in clean energy. Um, previously an internet entrepreneur. Gigaton Throwdown got started because a friend of mine, who's now part of the White House, he said to me, you know, you guys could all make a bunch of money and not make a bit of difference. I'm like, wow. I thought about it for a little bit, and I realized he's right. Um, solar could increase by a factor of 10, 20, 30, and that still would not make that big of a difference. I would do well. Entrepreneurs would do well. Um, employees would do well. But as far as the climate goes, that just doesn't matter. So what would it take? What would it take to make a big difference in climate change, energy security, and economic development through the expansion of clean energy? So that's what we set out to do with Gigaton Throwdown. The first thing we asked is, well, what are we talking about? We need, we need technologies that can do all three things, climate change, energy security, and economic development. So we looked at nine different pathways, all the ones that you'd expect that have already been mentioned, but also ones that you might not have expected, like, um, like nuclear and like um, energy efficiency and building materials. One of the things you see right away is the massive expansion that's necessary for any one of these technologies to reach one gigaton of carbon dioxide reduction by 2020. So we specifically set out a short-term goal, similar to what we're talking about here. Um, we specifically set out a goal that said it's associated with carbon, because if you focus on carbon dioxide, you also get the benefits of energy security and economic development. So in order to achieve that kind of abatement, there has to be a significant increase in the amount of wind, solar. One of the interesting findings is that nuclear is already at gigaton scale. The current scale of nuclear is already abating about one uh, gigaton per year of carbon dioxide. If we had to satisfy that with other methods, um, we would have additional gigaton per year of carbon dioxide being emitted into the atmosphere. Um, the amount of investment that is happening over the next uh, uh, 10 years is enormous. $13 trillion will be invested into all energy technologies over the next 10 years. Already, based on industry projections, about $3.5 trillion is going to go into clean energy. Uh, our projections are that you could get to a massive ramp up that would satisfy climate stability, which means about 8 gigatons per year reduction, for about $8.4 trillion over that period of time. Sounds like a lot, but it's, it satisfies 60% of the electricity over that period of time, and for an amount of investment that's comparable to what's already expected to go into coal and oil and uh, existing infrastructure. Wind is a super interesting finding. We're already on a pathway that will put us on over one gigaton per year reduction uh, compared to the baseline through wind. Now think about that for a second. That is not currently being incorporated into projections by the different uh, organizations thinking about climate change. Wind is already making a big difference. If we could manage to continue to grow wind at its current growth rate of about 25% a year, which it's been doing for about 15, 20 years, we would abate four gigatons per year. Now, most analysts don't think we can do that, but that's part of why we're here. To be able to get to four gigatons, half the abatement that we need in 10 years, is not inconceivable. Um, another big uh, contributor, what we found was um, one of the most promising areas, building materials and building efficiency. This is consistent with what a lot of other findings are, but the ability to get to one gigaton of abatement through those technologies, through better cements, through better insulation, uh, higher R value windows, is not only feasible and possible to scale up, but uh, affordable. I also wanted to point out that there were a couple of things that we found that are things to watch out for. One is that resource constraints can end up uh, limiting what's possible. The amount of solar that would be necessary to get to one gigaton is about one terawatt. This is on a worldwide basis. Uh, one terawatt of solar. You know, we currently have about eight gigawatts installed. Massive ramp up required. But the, the thin film approaches, which are preferable, you're about to see why, um, for, for carbon abatement reasons, are limited in the resources that are available. It's not clear exactly how much, but the resource availability of things like tellurium and indium uh, limit those uh, thin films to hundreds of gigawatts um, in, in total. And the reason why we like thin film is that if you just did it with crystalline sil uh, silicon, 
the ramp up to one terawatt uh, over that 10 year period would actually result in, over that 10, period, 10 year period, a net increase in the amount of carbon dioxide because it takes so much electricity to make crystalline silicon. Those numbers are getting better every year, but it's still true that there's a payback time that's longer than one year. Uh, and so if you grow very, very fast, you end up having an adverse impact. Um, if you did this with thin film, you wouldn't have this problem, but then you've got this quandary of, of resource costs, uh, resource availability. We chose only to look at expansion of new demand and didn't look at the reduction of existing capacity, which I think is the charge that we have here. Um, the reason we chose to do that is because if you just look at new demand, you don't have to take into account that existing productive capacity. And someone has to pay for that. Uh, the rate payers are already expecting that uh, existing plant is gonna be paid off a particular period of time. We do want to avoid that complexity and uh, it's one that uh, made our analysis much simpler. Uh, in the end, what we found is that it is absolutely possible to get to these massive uh, changes in the, in the infrastructure and use much more clean electricity and clean fuels, um, that it really took commitment and political will in order to create the marketplace to allow for the expansion. There are no fundamental barriers to making it happen.